reasons why this is my number one REIT in my portfolio, reasons why this is my number one REIT in the market, and reasons why I'm buying and why I'm not fearful when the market currently is on Vici. Now let's look at my portfolio performance first. If you like transparency and honesty, this is the channel for you. Be sure to subscribe. You'll see in my real estate sector, I have Vici and Realty Income. I am putting my money where my mouth is. I'm very bullish on Vici and it makes up 8.1% of my portfolio where Realty Income makes 4.78. The reason why I hold more Vici, I think it's far superior, but I do have Realty Income to add diversification as it's Vici's competitor. So I like to hold kind of the top two, shall you say. But Vici to me is by far the best and I wanna tell you why. First of all, it collects 100% of its rents. Then we can see that it survived the pandemic with no issues. It survived the huge data breaches of MGM and Caesars. And I have confidence it will survive the next issue and the next and the next. It also made it to investment grade. Then it made it onto the S&P 500. It's been raising its dividends like clockwork. I'll tell you a little bit more detail about that a little later. It does triple net leases, which is a lease agreement on a property where the tenant agrees to pay all real estate taxes, business insurance, and maintenance, the three nets, hint the name. It has CPI rent escalators in its agreement, so it's a hedge against inflation. When inflation is really high, it can utilize that to raise rents higher than what it could normally. It's also got unique world-class properties offering amazing entertainment in the entertainment capital of the world, and that cannot be replicated. Then Vegas is expanding and not slowing down. We have professional sports such as football and NASCAR. We have concerts. We have that cool sphere thing. We have shows, conferences, adult entertainment, etc., etc. This equates to increased property appreciation, increased occupancy demand, and demand of these hotels services, which means Vici gets to collect more and more year after year because of this growth. Also, Vici is expanding outside of Vegas, so they are diversifying and reducing their concentration. They're doing golf courses, wellness centers, and other resorts outside of Vegas. But if you were to be concentrated, Vegas would be the place to do so. Also, maybe one day, they've talked about this, they might expand internationally, which would be a massive growth opportunity. Lastly, of course, there's many others. I'm just highlighting the best of the best. A key REIT financial metric is AFFO, Adjusted Funds from Operations and Vici's is growing very healthily year after year. More on that in a minute. So with all these positives, give me one reason why we should sell out of this top tier REIT, bite into the fear and run to treasury bonds. I do feel the growth opportunity with Vici over the next 10 years will be far beyond what a 10 year treasury could ever return. So is there risk? Of course, but what's the risk of Vegas becoming obsolete, of people not wanting to have experiences, of going on vacation, of moving to a city that has a lot of financial benefits. You see a lot of Californians moving to Las Vegas because it, they provide a better cost of living. That is why Vegas is booming. I mean, why are huge venues, leagues, and businesses moving to Vegas? Not because it's suffering, it's because it's thriving. Some say an unfortunate event on the strip could hurt Vici. Well, we have had a handful of those over the years, unfortunately, but Vegas bounces back and does so quickly and Vici still collected 100% rents during these times. I don't see it being any different with the next challenge or unfortunate event. Another claim is Vegas will run out of water. Well, Vegas has the best water conservation and water recycling systems in the Southwest, actually kind of in the world. In fact, the city's population grows each year, but its water usage usually decreases each year. A study showed that Las Vegas has been the most successful urban water conservation metropolitan area, and they said in the world. They've added over 800,000 new residents to its valley since 2002 and actually reduced the water usage by 23%. So they're comparing a decade here from 2002 to 2022. That's impressive to reduce water usage by 23% over a decade. This gives me enough confidence that over the next 10 years or even 30, this will not end Las Vegas. Also, again, with all the huge venues, leagues, and businesses moving to Vegas, I'm sure this is a huge consideration and one where the fears are calm due to the data and future infrastructure of Vegas's water sources. They would not make these huge investments in Vegas if the risk of water running out over the next few decades was an issue. These are the main arguments I see 
and not one of these things I think is high risk or anything that will affect Vegas in the near future, AKA my investing time frame. Now, a look at some of the financial aspects. The dividend is hovering around 5.5% currently and grows an average of 8.63% yearly. A cool story is I just bought a new phone. I, my old one's six years old, so it was time. And I bought $70 worth of accessories. The next day after I bought those accessories, I logged into my account and saw I received $75 from Vici and thought, this is the power of dividends. If I wanted to, I could have pulled those dividends out and paid for my accessories. How cool is that? Now, if you look at the stock performance over the last year, it's gone down almost 6%. So it hasn't been performing well, but if we look at the revenue and the net income, we'll see revenue has increased 72.28%. Uh, when you're taking into account 2021 versus 2022 and net income grew 10.24 percent very impressive now profit margin has declined which means its costs have gone up it is acquiring new properties and of course the expenses of everything in this economy is going up so it makes sense to me i'm not worried it's not a red flag and that affo is growing and increasing 25.7 percent when you compare it year over year from their recent earnings this is what you want to see. This equates to strong financials. So we have a stock that's down year to date, almost 6%, but revenue is growing, net income is growing, AFFO is growing, and they are collecting 100% of rents, etc. Yes, earnings per share has declined, profit margins have declined, but with a company that is serious about growing and acquiring new unique properties, these metrics will be temporarily affected, but things will catch up eventually due to their other strong financial metrics. They will be on a growth path again someday soon. So I am not worried at all about Vici. Instead, I am loading the boat while I still can before investors realize that this company is setting itself up for strong future growth and dividend payouts. A company that collects 100% of rents gives me full confidence it will pay out 100% of its dividends every time and into the future while raising that dividend consistently without interruption. So it's the opportunity you have to look at, not the stock chart. It's the fundamentals and the financials you need to analyze and see if it's company specific or industry specific. This company is just fine and I sleep well at night holding this experiential REIT. By all means, share anything you think I am not considering that would create a change in my bullish outlook. We are an investing family on this channel and sharing these things helps us all. This is me sharing my research and analysis and I hope it helps put things in a different and realistic perspective for all you Vici holders out there if you are fearful. I am focusing on the quality and future growth, not so much the current valuation, though I feel it is undervalued currently and at a strong buy in my opinion. Quality companies are never cheap or shall I say rarely fall into that category. So you need not wait for a crash of some sort that may never happen, but rather buy in when you feel the stock is undervalued comparable to its future growth. And for me, Vici is right in that sweet spot right now. So I am buying. With that said, happy investing. I'll be very anxious to hear your comments on this video and we'll see you soon on Mark Arnold's Finance.